What's going on guys? It's your boy Kevin Yee, the PharmD. Have you guys ever been curious what life looks like after pharmacy school? Maybe you're like me and you've graduated pharmacy school and you have all these questions. Maybe it's like how to find a job, how to interview, how to build a fulfilling life outside of just the pharmacy world. Well, in today's video, I got the two MVPs of pharmacy. I have Brian Fung, really successful informatics pharmacist, did his PGY1, PGY2. He's a really close friend of mine. And I have the one and only Paul Tran. I thought it'd be really cool to have a triple threat on this podcast. Set some time out, watch this whole video in its entirety. And as always, if you're interested in more pharmacy videos, make sure to check out my playlist. Anyways, guys, Without further ado, let's get into it and make sure to follow Brian and Paul in the links below. I'll see you guys later. Peace. What up guys? It's your boy, Kevin Yee. And today I have the triple, triple, triple D's in the house, triple farm D's. I got the OG Paul Tran and I have Brian Fung in the house. Did you guys go to undergrad together or what? No, Brian slept over my house, and that's how we met. <laughs> if you guys don't know, we actually pretty much dominate the pharmacy YouTube market, and I thought it'd be really cool for us to just like share our experiences about life after pharmacy school. My intention of this video was to give you different perspectives about what life after pharmacy school is like and give you an ultimate guide to... Uh, to finding your first job, paying off your loans, and having a kick-ass life. We'll start off with Paul today. I mean, Paul, tell me, tell us a little bit about yourself for y'all, for those that don't know who you are. So I started on uh, YouTube probably I don't know, 2010 ish, but my my account so shows 2012 because <laughs> I had to restart the channel, uh, but. Yeah, I went to school at uh, the University of Washington, and I've been out for about six years now, and I work in long-term care and inpatient uh, hospital pharmacy. For y'all that don't know, um, Paul is like the OG ph pharmacy channel. I think you're, uh, what, Paul, you're like one of the first channels, right? I think so. I didn't see anyone out there <laughs> when I did it. <laughs> yeah, Brian, did you see any other, uh, did you see any other YouTube channels back in the day too? No. No, he's the first. Paul. Paul. <laughs> he's the OG, man. Um, Brian, tell us about your, you and your channel. Uh, so I actually had my YouTube channel back in 2005, uh, but obviously wasn't doing pharmacy content. I made a, my first video was uh, a copy of the back back dorm boys <laughs> to Asian, Asian kids lip singing. So I, I thought it'd be funny if I did that. So that's how I got on YouTube, but I haven't really like done any pharmacy stuff until recently. Yeah. Due to this guy, Kevin over here. <laughs> yes, sir. Like, yo, you got to get on uh, YouTube and do some pharmacy content. So that's what I did. But uh, some of my background uh, is bachelor's in pharmacy school at University of Florida uh, did residency in Sarasota and then did informatics residency afterwards. And now I'm an informatics pharmacist. So that's pretty chill. It's yeah. Me in a nutshell. Yeah. I think, uh, yo, Brian is definitely the poster boy of uh, pharmacy, man. He did his PGY one, PGY two. And dude, you're going to be in school forever, man. You're, you're doing your MPH now too, right? I know it's time to that's quit, crazy. man. <laughs> <laughs> too much school. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I wanted to get into like your pharmacy journey. I'll start off with Paul, but what got you into pharmacy to begin with? In high school, I was uh, basically trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I didn't really know something in tech or healthcare. Basically, you know, parents, they tell you to do that kind of stuff, right? Be a doctor, be a, you know, whatever engineer. And then uh, I just started volunteering at the hospital, just like a front desk person. And then eventually I ended up volunteering in the pharmacy. And then I was like, well, I can do this. This seems okay. And so that's when I chose to become a pharmacist. So, so you did it because uh, your parents told you basically? <laughs> well, yeah. And then after volunteering there, I knew I could do it. It's like, yeah. this seems like an okay fit. So then I just did it. I'm, cu I'm curious. Why not um, like med school or like dentistry or anything else in all? in the healthcare field back then i didn't have the confidence to do it mm. and, but looking back you know i studied with the dental students the med students and i was getting 
better or if not like the same or better grades than them and and so I definitely feel like if I went back I could do it but I just didn't have the confidence back then mm, was it I mean like confidence that you feel like you wouldn't be able to get in uh, wouldn't be able to get in or just wouldn't be able to do the job I just didn't know if I could see patients and and be responsible for that so <clears throat> like why exactly didn't you think you could uh I don't know. I think it's just like growing up in, in the Asian family and culture, I just didn't have confidence. Like nothing, like I've seen your video where you said, you know, parents never feel like you're good enough or you don't feel good enough ever, you know? So I just never felt that. Yeah. I, I, I totally relate to that, man. Like, uh, it's not even always your parents. Like you're right. Growing up in the Asian culture, sometimes it's just like, man, when you're around competitive people, you just feel like you're just like never enough, you know. Or that's yeah. how I felt at least. Hey, yo, Brian, tell me, tell me, tell us about your uh, your how you knew pharmacy was for you or not, man. Well, kind of similar, Paul, in the sense that I I kind of got um, led down that path by my parents too. But I started off as like. Uh, engineer. So I wanted to be like a computer engineer, game designer. I was like this nerd that just played games all day. So I was like, I'm going to be a game designer. And uh, what kind of drove me there was one, parents, you know, they're like, you, you're not going to make money as a game designer. <laughs> but I, was, I didn't care. That's, that's what I like. But, uh, Brian, Brian, let's be real. You didn't want to become a game designer. You just want to play StarCraft 2 all day, man. You want well, to be a pro gamer. Pro gamer too. That was, that was on the list. That was on the list. But all, somewhere that was techie. So I wanted to do that uh, and live in my room, room all day for the rest of my life. <laughs> my mom was like, no, you can't do that. So I was like, all right, cool. You know what, what shifted me to actually really think about healthcare was near the end of high school. My grandma was diagnosed with uh, ovarian cancer and, you know, just seeing her in that state and hospitals and doctors, and I just didn't know what was going on. So it just kind of uh, really pushed me, you know, especially for us in like, coming from an Asian background, we're really close to usually our grandmas. So she, she was someone I was really close to. And I was like, you know, there's no one in my immediate family that's in healthcare. Yeah. I can't see blood. <laughs> so I had no. why, can't you, why can't you see blood, Brian? You know, I pass out, man. It's not good. It's like, <laughs> oh, dang. I can't, I can't Wait. see needles. I can't see blood. So when, when did you realize that you couldn't see blood? Uh, I, I think I'm, I used to like cry a lot when I get shots <laughs> and then I, I get very woozy when um, I see blood, just like when I was a kid. So I just, uh, I knew. how do you get through code blues? Uh, you know, it's not great, <laughs> but uh, that code, code blues weren't, I guess, as bad. Like I, during rotations, there are times where I got to shadow different surgeries and I literally passed out. So I, <laughs> it's not for me. Dude, you can see, you, I, I want you guys to notice too, like as Brian's talking about this, you can see the sweat beads like coming down his forehead right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My hands are sweating. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, one of the major reasons for me, like if you haven't seen a lot of my videos, I went in for all the wrong reasons, right? I went in for the money, the doctor title, all that sort of shit. But I think if I were to go deeper, about why I went to pharmacy school was because um, I just wanted, man, like it goes back to what Paul was saying. Like, I just want to prove my, like my, my dad and make him sort of proud of me and do something more. Right. I went into, like, I went in thinking that I would do engineering and stuff, but I mean, somewhere along the way, I was just like, you know what it would make my parents a lot more proud is doing something like pharmacy. And again, like you, Brian, how you want to help your family. And I was just like, there's no one in the healthcare field for my family too. So I wanted to kind of be, be there for my family if anything happened, you know? And that was a huge reason why I went to pharmacy. Let me ask you guys, I mean, what's a, what's a good reason for someone to go into pharmacy or not? It's a good question. I think that, you know, if, if you've worked in pharmacy or volunteered in pharmacy and you enjoy it, then you should, yeah, go to pharmacy school. But if you are just going in for the money or just because people tell you to and you have no idea what it's about then i think it's a bad idea don't do it aka don't do it for those reasons man yeah i think it's a hard question because like it's hard to know 
uh, you know what you're truly passionate about. Even going through pharmacy school, I, I the lines were always blurred for me. Like, what what is pharmacy? Like, as from my school, they focused a lot on clinical stuff. So part of the time, they were teaching us to like diagnose. So I was like, this is pharmacy, and I was like, you know, you know so it's kind of blurred nowadays. Yeah. Even if you're like you're going to as a nurse practitioner or PA, it's like, how do you know that you love pharmacy? So I kind of struggle with that question, but um, it it's hard. I think like Paul, if you, Paul said, if you maybe shadowed in a pharmacy or have volunteered or something and that work feels right to you, then, then sure. I think that might be the way to go, but it, I'm not sure how best to answer that question. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I think Paul actually gives great advice for that. Just to really talk to people who are in it and living it. Let me ask you, how old were you guys when you decided to actually do this, to go into pharmacy? For me, it was probably my freshman year in college that I just decided. Yeah. But I had experience in high school. Mm. What kind of experience did you have like in high school? So I was in uh, the hospital doing the front desk work. And then that volunteer coordinator uh, linked me to a pharmacist at an independent compounding pharmacy. Mm. And so I was just basically the cashier there and got to see how they worked mm. and I enjoyed it there. And then I was also uh, a computer tech intern with the city. And basically I was just putting together and taking apart computers all day uh, <laughs> and during high school. So it was going to be either in the tech field or healthcare. I wasn't really sure. But then when I started my freshman year in undergrad, I decided to go pre-pharmacy. Mm. Hmm. Yeah. What made you go pre-pharmacy instead of like doing something like bio or something like that? I don't know. I just, I guess I liked uh, when I volunteered there, it was, I enjoyed it. So yeah, I uh, went that route. How about you, Brian? Probably like it's very similar, Paul, that's that aspect too. It was high school, you know, with the whole grandma issue and yeah. then freshman year, uh, I got in there. <laughs> the <time> frame, <laughs> that's what it is. And it's I, a blur, man. It was a long time ago. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and, I, and I just came out as an informatics pharmacist, you know? <laughs> I was just going to say, like, uh, but in high school and in undergrad, there was very little information uh, out there at the time to how to get into pharmacy school. There was, like, nothing out there. And, and I just... But I did use that student doctor network at the time. <laughs> <laughs> student doctor network existed back then, like when we. Were... I think it did, but it was pretty uh, new. Yeah, so. it's so crazy. People don't like. I I think people forget how old we are. Like, dude, <laughs> when we were born, there was no Google <laughs> like that, right? I think I was ten when Google came out. So that can tell you like how, how like new this like technology was. And you got to date us, Kevin. <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know, man. Um, but yeah, I think it's like really like, especially back then, it was just really hard to figure out to see if something was for you or not. I mean, at the same time, you're like, I was like maybe 17 and I was still trying to figure out my life. And it's, it's kind of hard, like at that point to determine like a career that determines the rest of your life. Man. So let me ask you guys, like fast forward, let's not talk about pharmacy school. I'll get PTSD talking about that. <laughs> but um, do you remember that feeling when you actually like, when you actually were licensed? How was that feeling? I actually remember that day because I was at the long-term care pharmacy and it was, I think, midnight. And the reason I was there late was because they just rolled out the new software uh, system where we do all the uh, order processing. And I just checked online and I was like, oh, I just got licensed. <laughs> yes. And, and then my uh, boss was sitting there and I was like, do I get a pay bump now? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, did you celebrate at all or were you just like, oh, whatever? That was, yeah, that was it. <laughs> I didn't celebrate. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. How about you, Brian? <laughs> you know, it's it's something that I feel as though I should remember, <laughs> but I don't. I because I, I got licensed like a month after residency started, so I was probably like starting work or something. But 
I, I really don't remember. It's very weird. Right now. <laughs> I'm sure I was happy for a second. I just went back to doing work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you sure it's not old age talking? Uh, it, it might be. I'm starting to develop something. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I remember like, uh, it was so funny because um, I just moved to California at the time. And I remember um, my dad calling me and he's like, you got something in the mail. I was like, oh, really? And I was like, dad, can you, can, you, can you open it? And he was like, oh my God, you passed. I was like, this is like, I don't know. I was like, I didn't believe my dad. I was like, wait, are you serious? I thought I failed. It's like, no, <laughs> you, 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 you passed your exam. I was like, fuck yeah. And I, like, dude, there's like paperwork I had to submit and stuff. And I remember like my dad, I was like, dad, you need to overnight this shit to me like right now. I need to make sure that, uh, that uh, I get like I send them all, all my paperwork. So, like, dude, it felt so good. You know, it felt like I hit this huge accomplishment. I mean, I know to you guys it didn't feel like anything, but well, but you're <laughs> from Cali too. Like Cali exams, everyone knows like hard. <laughs> I'm not from Cali, but yeah, I mean, dude, I'm not gonna lie. When I took my exam, I was just like, the fuck is this? All this shit. I don't even know what. I don't even know what like. I did, I did, like, dude, I just made a lot of educated guesses on the exam and stuff. So, but I was like really happy that I, I got it. And then I remember that, that day, like after I found out I passed all my exams, uh, I remember just like sh- shooting straight to like San Diego and I was just like partying with all my party. Friends. Yeah. That's how <laughs> yeah. Um, that's cool. I mean, did you guys, once you guys like were licensed, did you guys have any like worries or anything like that or concerns? Or what were your initial thoughts when you first got licensed? My, for me, it was just at that time, it was actually hard to find. I didn't have a full-time job when I finished. Mm. Uh, so I just, I was running on two per diems for mm, probably six months or so. And then, and then I got the full-time at the long-term care. Mm. So, so that was my main worry when I was finishing up let's talk a little bit more about that i mean how did you find your first jobs in like pharmacy so i uh continued um being per diem at the hospital i interned at okay and my manager at the time actually uh she's not working there anymore but she uh basically asked me hey paul when's your last day and then i was like uh i was hoping to stay on per diem (laughs) and she's like oh okay and that was basically that I get to, I got to stay on per diem there. And I think they were kind of uh, in a kind of a difficult situation at the time with staffing too, because I believe there was four pharmacists on maternity leave. Uh, and so they needed people. And so maybe I lucked out in that sense. Yeah. And, and then my other per diem job at the long-term care was, through a Walgreens pharmacist who recommended me to the manager at the long-term care. Mm. And so that's how I got in the door there. Dude, that's, awesome. that's so crazy. You had two, so you had two jobs at that time. Yeah. Like, two at the time. Yeah. Well, most people are trying to get one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is why it's because Paul took all the jobs. Yo, right. you want to know why it's pharmacy saturated? It's because people like Paul are taking all your jobs. Yeah. Right now I have four. <laughs> Damn. <It's> so- <laughs> but i'm trying to cut back though for for uh youtube and stuff yeah so. that's so crazy though like if you you know when that person was like hey when's your last day if you made up an answer that could totally change the course of your life dude yeah exactly <laughs> i was i was kind of thrown off when she asked me that that's i don't awesome. know i looked out i guess hey brian how about you how did you get your first uh pharmacy job mm, i guess it depends uh first post residency or after farm school Tell us both. Well, for, I guess, residency is just basically, you know, uh, looking for residencies you're interested in and applying to them. But I think most people already know about like where my story is, where I didn't match, you know, I didn't get my residency of choice. So basically I looked at what was left and I just kind of applied from there. And thankfully, very thankfully, one of those hospitals was a place where I did two rotations at. So they kind of knew me already. And, you know, probably similar to Paul, you know, connections really matter. And uh, they brought me in for an interview and 
got my PGY one there. And then second year, very similar. There's not many informatics agencies <laughs> out there. So I was like, there's not many to choose from. So I just applied to all of them. <laughs> and I got matched uh, to my Utah position. So yeah. those are pretty straightforward. And then the job, the job afterwards was interesting. And I think it's a, a topic that I want to talk about a lot more to like students nowadays. And actually I was talking to one of my pharmacy students uh, today about this is like after my second year residency, I got offered four different jobs and four, all four of them were very different. And I'll tell you why one was at my original site. You know, they want to keep you on, obviously they invested in you. So that's cool. Great city, great opportunity, a uh, reputable program, right? Safe. The other one is my current position, which is a fantastic opportunity, but there's a lot of opportunity costs. Like it was in the middle of nowhere. So I have to weigh that great for career path, not great for everything else. And then the other two was back home where I was born uh, in Florida. So I can be close to family and friends, but the pay wasn't great. The ladder and towards like career development wasn't great. So I was like, that would be family. So I had kind of three options, safe, career, or family and friends. And I picked the career development and that's how I got that job. Um, how, how did you go about making that decision though? Because I feel like that's a very tough decision right there. It, it is, but I, I think there is a lot of, so, so it's kind of like psycholo psychology, or development in your formative years. Growing up, I always felt as though I was never good enough for anything. And I always felt like I was going to fail at everything. And I did fail at a lot of things. So I wasn't like a great student, wasn't great at anything. I just had to work hard to get somewhere. And um, I always feel like I needed to prove myself. And I think it's the same mentality I have all the time now is I focus on career first over everything. And that unfortunately is prioritize over family and friends. So that's how I chose that path. Mm. A little morbid here. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was just, yeah, that's, that's kind of bleak, man. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, get, I totally get what you mean. It's just like, <clears throat> you want to do great things, right? We only have a finite amount of time on this planet. And I get it. You want to do really great things. And I'm actually the same way. Um, there's a reason why I'm out here in California rather than back home. There's a reason why I choose to stay single rather than be in a committed relationship is because like you can only focus on so much, you know, and for me, I want to focus all my attention on like business and really growing myself at this point in my life. Will that change? Probably. It will definitely change probably within the next five years. Kind Didn't of you ask like change to like refocus, like family and friends kind of thing? Sorry? Like change to not be career focused? Well, eventually I want to have a family. I mean, like I want to have family. I want to have kids. I want all that sort of stuff, you know? It's like passing on the torch, right? Yeah. It's one thing to have all the success in the world for yourself. But to me, it matters a lot more to be able to give that to other people. Um, I feel the same way as you guys, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like family and friends. Definitely, it's hard to find time because I'm so focused on working and careers uh, with YouTube and multiple jobs, I, there's just not enough time to do everything. So, but so I, I'm, I'm kind of curious from your perspective, Paul, you know, like four, four jobs and, and <laughs> on side, I, I mean, you have a family, like the, I think that's the big difference between Kevin and I, like you have a family and I feel as though you're doing a lot. Like, how do you manage your time? Yeah. How do you balance it all? Uh, it's just like a routine and trying to, stay uh, focused you know sometimes uh, sometimes it's difficult for sure I have some down days where I feel like is it worth it is this worth it uh, to continue this path uh, but then I, I also check in like my wife I check in with her to see you know is she okay is she happy mm -hmm. uh, and if and she's always been supportive of what I do and so you know I'm really lucky in that sense because you know, I, I really don't have enough time to spend with her all the time, mm -hmm. and, you know, working night shift and all these jobs and YouTube. 
So I'm really grateful for that. And my parents are, are, are very, uh, you know, they want to see me succeed and whatnot. And so, um, you know, Asian parents, they'll, they'll let you, you know, career is first, career is first, you know, job first. So yeah, that's how, that's how I do it, I guess. Mm, yeah. Sounds like, uh, one thing that I hear is that the way that you manage it all is like every way, well, like at least relationship wise, everybody's on the same page as you. Yeah. 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 Maybe, dude, Brian, maybe that's our problem. We just need to find people that are on the same page. Uh, yeah. Like being supportive of like what you do and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. That's 100%. hard. Yeah. I think that that's the thing that scares me too. Like, it's just that, um, if I get into a committed relationship, I mean, there's responsibilities for anything. Just like if you take another job, there's responsibilities that come with that. And I think one of the biggest things that scares me is not being able to, uh, fulfill like to actually fulfill that those responsibilities and kind of like be feel like a failure you know you know even like speaking on that makes me think of like when i was in high school and college and i used to think about this like as we get older we think of like people that can support us and i used to always think at the time like you need to find a girl that will support you in everything you do right and so at the time i was like girls may or may not support you and they may come and go, but games will never leave you. <laughs> so, so all I used to do is play games. Starcraft will never leave you. Yeah, man. You're, you, got, you got your games with you. <laughs> Unless it's WoW. You got to pay yeah. monthly for WoW and you know, if you have money, then they're going to leave you. I, well, I used to play a lot of games, but I stopped uh, when I started college. Oh, what kind of games did you play? I played World of War, or not World of Warcraft, but Warcraft Three, I think. Yeah. What? Uh, yeah. And, Dude, uh, Warcraft Three is where it's at. All right, Brian. Was I'll it? play WoW. Was it Counter Strike? Oh, no. Counter Strike. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Up. Yeah. Up, maybe. <laughs> That's awesome. Did you play Ladder, Paul? Warcraft. No, ladder? no, I didn't play that. <sighs> and then I was playing. What is it? Uh, a lot of Xbox, like Halo and RPGs, like Final Fantasy stuff, like that. That's pretty funny because uh, all of us have that like same background. We all like <laughs> love games. Like I was obsessed with games and stuff. I used to play FF8 all the freaking time and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The so games. like, are we like not changing any of the stereotypes here? We're just like being the stereotype. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Okay. So let me just focus back on like uh, on jobs for a second right so a lot of people are are struggling with their first jobs and one thing that i'm seeing a common pattern between you two is like you guys are really leveraging your network right or leveraging your relationships how do but how do you go exactly like setting up those relationships to begin with you know that's a good question yeah i can i can tell you the an awkward <laughs> one i had before <laughs> a very awkward one uh yeah, this is kind of embarrassing to even talk about. <laughs> but like, so, you know, you learn from the people that are around you. And throughout pharmacy school, I had a lot of mentors that taught me like, it's, it's not uh, what you know, it's who you know. So I always had the mentality of like network, network, and meet people that are important in life and stuff like that. So one of the first things I did uh, to do this was at a conference and there was, I'm not going to put any names because it's just so embarrassing. <laughs> but I, was, I went to a conference. It was my first conference, major conference after pharmacy school I went to. And there was a guy there, a very, very important guy that I wanted to meet. And like, he's so busy the entire time. So I was like, how can I meet him? So what I did is I followed him to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you stop it. But, 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 you know, I didn't, I didn't talk because... You know, there's, there's a code. You don't talk to another guy when in the bathroom. I hate when guys talk to me in the bathroom. It's just weird. You don't, you don't do that. Even if you know them. That's no, no. So I didn't do that. <laughs> but uh, I basically walked in, washed my hands real quick, went back outside. I just waited for him outside of the bathroom. That's so creepy. <laughs> I know. It's, it's like borderline stalker. But it was cool. That developed into like uh, kind of 
a connection and every year or so I would see him at different conferences and mm. uh, make sure I stay connected with him. And so I met a lot of people through that. Uh, that's the awkward <laughs> way of doing it. That, so what Brian is trying to say is like, find the person that you Stop want to talk people. to you, follow them to the bathroom and then wait outside. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it works though. It works. <laughs> Yo, hey, Brian, Brian uh, has this PGY1, PGY2 and uh, has a kick-ass job. So that's one up on me, man. <laughs> that's a good way to do it. I, you know, that's one of my weak spots is, uh, you know, when I go to conferences, I don't, you know, maybe I'm too shy or whatever to talk to people, but I haven't been to one since school actually. Wow. And I, I probably need to go to one now. <laughs> Dude, let's, let's hit one up together, man. Yeah. And the, Vegas, the Vegas one, whenever yeah. that comes up. That that just occurred. That might be another two or three years. Oh, okay, never mind. But, but, but you're close to Anaheim. Anaheim's next is this year. He's not close. To, uh, he's all the way up in Washington. It's kind of far. that's close oh, enough, yeah. man. That's yeah, close that's, enough. that's close enough. <laughs> you're, you're making it sound like yo, he's just like down the street. He can just drive. You know, I can drive. Paul, Paul can, man. <laughs> yeah, but dude, seriously, we should all hit up one. Um, hey Brian, what was your other story though? Um, I guess it's not really a story as much as like how I, I would say to network nowadays. It's like, I think it's important to like network with important people, but that was my only mentality before. Now it's just about building relationships and networking with people, anyone and getting to know someone else. So you can take something, um, that may be useful, like not, not like from a benefit perspective, just like forming true and real relationships and not thinking that it might benefit, but maybe it will in the future. That's the kind of uh, relationships and networking I do nowadays. Yeah, that's, what the fuck? Um, yeah, that's great, dude. Um, honestly, like, I've, now that I'm talking to a lot more people on, like, almost a daily basis, that's the mentality I go through. I, I'm like, I'm not thinking about business opportunities. I'm not thinking about selling them anything or anything like that. When I talk to people, I'm just trying to meet cool friends. I mean, that's actually how we became. Like, I never came up to you guys like, hey, guys. Well, actually, I did come up to you, Brian, uh, wanted to pitch a video and stuff. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but I, I'm just saying, like, you know, it, it, can, it comes up very organically. And I think, like, if you come up with a mindset of, like, hey, I'm making friends and I want to help as many people as possible, that's the way you should approach uh networking and stuff like that rather than just like hey man what can you do for me what can you do for me that's very sleazy i i just don't really vibe with those people paul what do you think yeah i agree you know and that's how everything worked out for me all my jobs i've ever gotten are through somebody you know I, it's always through somebody like from my first job is this is kind of embarrassing but i basically worked in like a sweatshop you know, I was working in uh, uh, for a company that basically made clothes for REI. And I was just rolling out fabric all day, like heavy rolls of fabric. And that was through my aunt. And then in high school, <laughs> um, with that, uh, that tech intern job, it was through my teacher. And then through undergrad, uh, one of my professors hired me as a uh, research assistant. Mm -hmm. And then uh, during college, I, in the summer, I worked as a cashier at mm -hmm. a grocery store. And that was through my cousin. You know, every single job has been through somebody. And then my third and fourth pharmacy job that I've added on were through classmates. Mm -hmm. So... So, so let me ask you, I mean, like most of us go through these interactions every day, a day we have friends, we have teachers and stuff like that. Yeah. But how do those opportunities come up? I mean, do you ask for them or do they just offer them to you? Well, usually, yeah. Like what, what Brian was saying, like building a relationship with these people. Mm. And then I would just let them know that, Hey, I'm looking for a job or, uh, if you know anything, let me know. Or I just, through talking to them, I find out where they work. And I was like, oh, is there any openings there or whatever? And then eventually I end up in that position. Mm. Um, and so actually those, the last jobs I got, I wasn't looking for extra jobs. They just contacted me and asked if I was looking. So mm. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just curious. I mean, do you maintain those relationships too? Do you like check up on those people from time to time or? Yeah. What's, what's so, that like? Yeah. The ones uh, that met me for the last two jobs, mm. uh, you know, after pharmacy school, we just, every now and then we get together for dinner or, you know, we go to each other's weddings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time you yeah. see each other. <laughs> But it's, it's getting more and more rare. It's just basically through text or Facebook, you know, social media, uh, or just meeting up for dinner or happy hour every now and then. But mm. it's becoming more rare, and I think it will become more rare because people are get, becoming pregnant and having um, starting families and whatnot. Let's say if you're to lose all your jobs tomorrow, Paul, mm-hmm. um, let's say you want to continue pharmacy, you want to still work pharmacy. What would that job search look like? Uh, so I definitely would reach out to everyone I knew for sure that I've uh, come across, like every pharmacist I knew and ask them if they know about any jobs. And, and then, I, of course, I would just start applying blindly, too, on top of that. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and yeah, but then, yeah, I would start, you know, uh, maybe... Uh, revisiting my resume and brushing up on my skills Mm. and look at conferences to meet people and reach out to you guys. (laughs) 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 And then of course I just continue YouTube and maybe focus on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Brian, if you're to lose uh, your, uh, your job tomorrow, what would you do? Well, I kind of talked about it in a, previously, but games that never leave you, so I'm going to go back there. <laughs> Damn. He <laughs> drowns out his games. <laughs> drowns out his pain with games. Damn. Try yeah. to try get on that Twitch Fortnite stream, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but, get famous. But uh, no, just, just like Paul, I think that's so important just to like reach out to your connections. I think that's always the first place I start. There's yeah. always jobs out there, um, you know, aside from the ones that are even published or just like people looking to hire and they... They want to hire someone they know already. So I'd, I'd always start with connections first. Yeah, yeah, I think that's like the warmest lead and you get those, um, the non listing the ones that aren't publicly listed too. Yeah, you're right. Um, quick question. How about like, uh, let's say, let's pretend for a second, you get a job, the interview process. I mean, how do you guys prepare for interviews or what is your interview experience like? Do you want to start, Brian, or...? Uh, yeah, I made you start so many times. <laughs> <I'm sorry>. <laughs> <laughs> I try to take your answer, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, yeah, whatever Paul said. That's, that's my answer. Yeah, <laughs> just agree. <laughs> um, it's, that's a good question. I, I think my interviewing skills have, like, kind of changed throughout the years. I bombed so many of my first interviews no research no nothing so obviously you know do research on the organization uh what kind what kind of research though like specifically what would you research so first off uh usually just like the company just the basics large how large that company is the the size the location like very bare bone basic stuff what they do what they believe in their mission and value very basics stuff like that but what I like to do, and I learned these from like the admin residents, uh, and I guess it's expected of them to do this when you're looking for admin residencies, is you do research on the pharmacists or the people that practice there. And I would go and like dig up all of their articles, like everything that's published or anything they've been involved with, projects, publications, uh, presentations. And then during the interview, I'll bring them up. And then they always get like, How'd you know that? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that, that, uh, that study you published in like 1985. He's like, what? <laughs> but it, it, it sets you apart, you know? So like, mm. that's what I like to do to make those personal connections with people. And then the other thing is like, um, staying up to date with any type of, uh, pharmacy issues, like the forefront of issues, like right now, like drug diversion, opiate crisis, um, 340B is huge, like all these other things, just being a little uh, educated on those facts and then bringing those up if, if needed. That's, that's usually where I start. Yeah, I think two points uh, that, that I really like is that you really do the research, but not like specific research to show that you actually, you actually care about these people. 
and that's that adds that personalized touch and then the second thing that you mentioned fuck i can't remember anymore <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that dude that's that's really good how about you paul yeah, I agree with most of everything what what Brian said. Stole my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> everything that Brian said. Yeah, and then on top of that, you know, I like to just Google, you know, interview questions and make a list, like the just standard ones, and then I come up with ideas, like oh, I should say at least one example for each of these questions. Just have it ready if the that question gets asked, and then I kind of just practice a little bit. So that, you know, at the interview, I don't stumble through my answers so much, but then I don't practice so much where it just seems like I'm just reading off something. (laughs) So, and then, uh, for, I, I came up with a question was thinking when Brian was saying, you know, research the pharmacist there and what studies they've done, how do students or how do people applying how do they find that info? Like if you were to research that. That's a good question. LinkedIn. Um, and this is like from like Red, uh, LinkedIn is one. Uh, but I don't, I don't think there's LinkedIn when I was applying. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, one, this wasn't popular back then. I don't, I don't remember. But uh, the most common example for residency, the residency pathway at least is prior to your interviews. Because I'm speaking from the experience of like usually your residency interviews, uh, they send you an itinerary of every single person that you're interview with, so mm, you know who you're gonna sit down with very specifically, and it's usually between five and eight individuals. So then I just go in PubMed, Google, and I just search for everything. Mm. I see. So you kind of yeah. like try to be stalker. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It revolves around the stalking theme. <laughs> <laughs> All about stalking. <laughs> And here's something I use for like, influ- like I know it's not like pharmacy related, but when I want to find something very personal, right? Um, sometimes I'll look at their Instagram too, because uh. Instagram. This is one tip I always use. Like, sure, you can get to know someone on a per- like on a very professional level, but when you get to connect with them on a personal level, that has a lot more connection. And Instagram is usually very intimate to most people. And they'll, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I checked out this restaurant. I went on vacation somewhere. So you kind of can get in the, the mindset of what they like, things like that. Um, and, Paul, just to follow up on what you did, um, you, you Google questions and whatnot. After a while, um, what I like to do after every single interview I go on, I actually write down all the questions that uh, they ask me for future uh, reference. And yeah, that's a good certain, idea. You notice certain patterns over and over and over again. Yeah, and then you uh, put an ebook and sell it to pharmacy students for like uh, fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Business thinking, yeah. But um, dude, that's that's really great. Um, cool. I mean, let me ask you, what was your what was your like first interview experience like for a pharmacist interview? Mm-hmm. Pharmacist interview, yeah. You know, my first one was with that long term care, and it was pretty generic. So the questions were all very generic because I, I had no experience as a pharmacist, just, you know, rotations. And so it was just the standard questions like, oh, tell me about a little bit about yourself. Uh, uh, what, what have you done in pharmacy? Stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it. Mm-hmm. So I, I thought it went okay. And it was with two people too not just the director and the lead pharmacist, but nothing special about that interview. It's just very generic. Were you nervous or anything like that? Yeah, I was, I was, I'm always nervous for interviews, but then once it starts and gets going, uh, my heart rate slows down and I, I, I get into the flow. Yeah. After you pop a propranol, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Brian? What was your first uh, pharmacist interview like? Um, hmm. Far- pharmacist interview? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh, pharmacist interview. Like, so like you're actually getting paid decent amount of money. Well, <laughs> so not including residency? <laughs> so no resin. Yeah, not residency. Yeah. Um, I think it was, I mean, 
I, I think I was very mature in my interviewing skills at that time because we just do so many interviews for residency. Uh, it was great. I, I am overly confident during interviews. Like I, I go to the, which is like good and bad. I think yeah. not, you don't want to be borderline like arrogant but you want to be confident and assertive. And that's how I approach interviews. And I am, I approach interviews by going to them and I say, what can you offer me? Like I'm interviewing hmm. you and it, it changes your mindset uh, because I was complete opposite before. I was like, please take me, please. <laughs> and it, it made me come off very desperate. Uh, I stumbled a lot. I was just not confident at all. It just wasn't really good. So I, my mindset has changed a lot to be, a little bit more assertive and say like, there's a lot I know I can bring to this table. What can you offer me? Uh, so my interviews have been very, I don't know, generic. It's just kind of a conversation on very basics. What do you do? What's the job responsibilities? Um, and this is what I can do. Yeah, I, dude, Brian, that brings up a really good point. It's a lot about the mindset you go into. You know, you can answer the, you can say the exact same words, but if you don't have the, the mindset or the tonality when you're the image that you're projecting out when you're when you're answering questions um that is a missing thing a lot of time and like you said with your mindset like i'm interviewing them i'll take it one step further i mean at the end of the day they called you because they have a problem they need something from you you're just there to see how you can help that's the mindset i go to any 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 conversation any interview any anything like that that's how i think you know, that we can add value to the table. But yeah. Okay, cool. Um, hey, ha let me ask you, have you guys had any bad interviews, like nightmare interviews? A lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any really bad interviews I mean, myself, but I, when I was interviewing someone, like I was on the panel, uh, this pharmacist uh, trying to get a job, he was just staring at the table the entire interview while he spoke. What? Yeah. It was very odd. No eye contact the entire interview. What? It was, yeah, it was weird. Was his name Brian Fung? That was Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my interviews. <laughs> How, how did that, like, like from an interviewer point of view, how did that make you feel like um, with someone just staring at a table and not looking you at the eye? What was that perspective like? It's, it was extremely awkward and it felt like he didn't care, but it, it seemed like he had some social issues or something that he just, he was just awkward. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So no, no one said, told it, told him to like, can you look up? <laughs> no, no one said that. <laughs> hey, Brian, can you, can you look up? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, cool. Brian, how about yourself? You said yet that you have some nightmare, uh, nightmare interviews. Yeah, I have, I have so many. I mean, I think that's why I'm in my position in the fact that I failed a lot, a lot. Uh, and then you, you know, learn from those like very embarrassing situations. Um, I mean, I can tell you the very, very, very first interview ever in my life was in college. I was interviewing for a fraternity and they ask you very easy questions, you know, like, what are you, are you, do you see yourself as a leader or a follower? I'm like, a, a follower, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, wait, wait. So, and then they start clarifying, like, are you sure? Like, the leader or follower like do you ever lead like it, it was just bad i answered all the easy questions that should have been answered one way or another and so that's an example another example was like a uh, pharmacy school my first year i interviewed at a job fair and i just picked random pharmacies or anything that looked interesting and I, I went into the interviews and this is like research. This is how I learned you have to research. I had no idea what I was interviewing for. I was just like, whoever accepted my interview, I'll just go. So I walked into this interview booth and I was like, oh, hi, how are you doing? You know, say, my name is blah, blah, blah. And they're like, so they start asking me about my experience about like, um, have you ever worked with nuclear agents before? I was like, a what? <laughs> <They're> <laughs> a what? Like, nuclear agents, like, like under a hood and stuff. I was like, 
I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, this is like, I was just like so confused. And she knew I obviously didn't read anything about the position. And she started telling me about it. It's like, so did you do any research? Like, we're a, a pharmacy that compounds uh, like very hazardous uh, agents or medications. I was like, oh, well, I probably don't want to. Well, I didn't say it, but I was like, I probably don't want to be in this job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was like, uh, but it, it just was so awkward. And she was just like, okay. Uh, and she was just like, next time I rec this is like within the first five minutes. I was like, next time I recommend that, you know, you probably should do some research. And it was so awkward. I felt like I needed to leave. But then I start, I don't know, freaking out. And I start asking her about her kids. It was very weird. Wait, 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 wait. She's what? Like, next. <laughs> how did you transition? Like, I, hey, next time I think you should research more. Oh, how are your kids, by the way? Yeah, no, I, I think it was trying to be like, do that small talk. Talk. I don't remember the exact conversation, but it was like, yeah. Uh, how's the weather? How do you have kids? Oh, you have kids? Or uh, are you, do, you feeling good today? Like how you, it, it was just horrible experiences. And like throughout pharmacy school, those are my interview experiences. It was just really bad. Yeah, but I think you're right, Brian. Like you need to have like bad, like you need to get that practice. Even if you're bad, I mean, you're getting better and better each time, right? So, yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Let's let's say that you get the job of your dreams. You're like you're like Paul over here and you get like four jobs. Four jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let me ask you guys, what's your strategy for paying off loans? Because loans are like a huge thing that every pharmacist thinks about. Yeah, you know, uh one of my uh previous interns actually asked me this question a couple of days ago. Hmm. And so Basically, my strategy is, you know, obviously earn as much money as you can and either you refinance if you have a, a bad rate and uh, or, you know, you think about paying it off instead of once a month payments, you can do weekly payments. So you're paying less interest overall in the long run. And so that can accelerate your pay, pay down schedule. Uh, but honestly, the fastest way is just pick up extra jobs. I mean, I, I don't know any other way you can really pay it off any faster. Mm. So earlier you were talking about refinancing, right? Um, yeah. What is considered a good rate? What's considered a bad rate? You know, I don't know what the interest rates are now, but from what I hear, students range anywhere from 5 to 8 or so or 9%. Uh, yeah. If you can get it. so. If you're at 9%, obviously you should get it down to like five if you can. So yeah. a lot of the, so I just did research on it pretty recently, but uh, like, I think the federal ones are like anywhere from five to 6%. And then the private loans range all the way up to like 12%. Oh yeah. 12. Fucking private loans, man. So dude, if you have a private loan, like that, that's that high, you definitely should refinance. Yeah. That's really bad. That's really bad. <laughs> And then I guess another thing that people don't think might not think about is that if your parents or someone that owns a home is willing to take a home equity line out to pay off your student loans, that interest will probably be lower and you get a tax deduction for that. But I don't know if Trump's new laws actually got rid of that or not. So mm. yeah. yeah, that's actually really smart. That's nice interesting. Time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Brian? Uh, it's kind of a hard question for me. Um, just because like, I feel as though it, it, the question is dependent on what the goals of that individual is. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I don't believe in paying off loans. It, 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 everything revolves around, um, the interest rate. So for example, let's say my student loans right now, federal loans is I think 6.25 or 6.5%, right? But you look at it something else, 6.5% is, is going this way. But then if you invest in the market, you can have seven upwards of potentially, potentially 7%. So then it makes sense to like pay off slowly on loans and invest over here. And it, it doesn't really matter how length of, what the length of time is, but you're paying it off in a way where you're still earning income. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm making a lot of sense. Yeah, that, Brian, your, your strategy is the same as mine. Um, it really depends on the person. Like that's, that's why I always ask two questions, right? 
or you fit in one of these two categories. Is your goal paying off as uh, quickly as possible or is it to make the most money on the long end? And uh, one thing, but you, what you're trying to say is that your rate of um, the ROI, like the rate of return is a lot higher yeah. than the interest rate on the, um, on the, on the loan. What Kevin said, that's exactly yeah. what I was trying to say. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I was going to go further and just add that, like, it, it depends. So there's the market, there's loans, but then there's like people like me that's going back to school and then there's like five, two nines. So like, I know I'm going to dump all this money into college. So I started a five, two, nine, so I can work on that too. So I, I think it depends like house mortgage. Are you getting married? Are you buying a house? Are you buying a car? Are you going back to school? Uh, all these other things factor into how you should target federal loan repayment or repayment on loans. Let me ask you, uh, for 529, right? That's a post-tax post -tax dollars, right? Yeah. So you're using your paycheck money and you get, um, and you get like a tax, uh, like a, I can't think of the word, but yeah. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, there's... There's uh, I'm not gonna talk about five two nines. There's a lot you can say about five two nines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, so it really comes down to those two things. Uh, I'm guessing Paul, you're more the type that um that wants to pay it off as quickly as possible, right? Yeah, for me, uh, that was my strategy because I wanted to be able to have more, uh, basically borrowing power when I purchased the home. And I guess that's kind of the thing here. Yeah, I agree with you. Like, what's your ROI? Obviously, if you have a 12% interest rate, then you, you probably should refinance or pay that off fast. Uh, and then for me, I wanted to be able to, you know, look good for the bank so that I could buy a home. And that's the problem with that uh, person that contacted me a couple of days ago is, her loan repayments are I think over two grand a month and she was struggling just to even save for a down payment on a house. And that was her main goal. And so I tried to help her out and figure out how to pay it off faster. Mm. Um, but yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. If you're, there's other ways to look at it, you know, long-term repayment, if your interest rate is low, then it's probably better to invest. Yeah. And I think it's also contingent on a few things that you actually keep your job, right? Uh, if we're, we're going Brian and my route, like, dude, that's if you keep your job and you actually stay in the, stay in pharmacy. If you find out two years that you freaking hate it, then it, <laughs> it, it, that, that strategy doesn't work very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Um, for me, definitely. I like the way I think is just like, Hey, um, I would probably pay off the, pay the minimum on my loans and figure out how to make more money on the long end. But that's just me. Some people just can't sleep at night um, knowing that they have debt. Uh, okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so, okay. So these people are paying off their loans. I mean, let me ask you guys, do you guys ever have thoughts about like um, changing careers or maybe switching out of like pharmacy altogether? I'll let Paul, Paul go first and I'll <laughs> and Brian will be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, whatever Paul said, that's my answer. Well, you know, I uh, thought about it, but just like thinking about the, the ROI, right? Is it worth it to switch to something else? Is there something I could get paid more at? You know, it's, it's hard for me because I can't think of a lot of things that could pay me more based on my age and like how long it would take me if I, change careers to make up for it. Yeah. Uh, and so that's what would hold me back. And like if I, you know, I've seen a video from Brian about going to medical school, you know, switching, it's just like, if I did that, I, it would take me so long to break even from where I'm at now. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the things. And then but if I were to switch, it would probably be, you know, be an entrepreneur, of course. Yeah. What kind of entrepreneur? So, well, right now I'm doing that YouTube thing and, and um, DIY building and stuff. So I'm hoping if I did that, I would try, try to start uh, expanding on that, working with sponsors and, 
and uh, maybe starting an Etsy business selling whatever I make. <laughs> huh. so. hey, I'm kind of curious uh, from, from the both of you. I don't know if I ever asked Kevin this question, but like it, it helps get a sense of uh, your personalities. And it's one of the things I ask people uh, when during interviews, like when I run out of things to ask, <laughs> I ask them that question. Yeah. Like, do you have any questions? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> but um, it, I think it's interesting because it gives uh, an idea of like individuals' personalities. But if I were to ask you guys what job you would want, any job in the world, if money was not an issue, what would you say? You have one, Kevin? Paul, <laughs> I'll take your <laughs> One job that I could do. Honestly, yeah, content creator is probably what I would like. Yeah. What what kind of content though? Like so I I do like that traveling thing and providing value with tips and things, but I just I just haven't done that. Uh and then the building stuff and just anything I'm interested in and creating content and adding value to people. Mm. And so yeah, that's kind of like what I do. I I don't know, I just get a lot of satisfaction with seeing something that I created and then same with video, you know, something you can film and, and edit and then you see the final product. It's just like you get that satisfaction of accomplishment from it. I don't know. Isn't that what you feel, Brian, with your, um, your recent travel videos? Yeah, I, I think so. It was definitely a very rewarding feeling that, you know, you've kind of created and you have that final product, it, it feels really nice. Um, I am, um, because you see, I, I almost wanna, was gonna guess that you, you wanted to be a carpenter or something like that. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no. I'm saying if money is not an issue though, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he's trying to force your answer, don't, don't give into <laughs> no, it, man. No, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> be- because like, I'll say from watching your videos, Yeah. It's like you take me through the journey of you literally are building something and you give us the uh, gratitude and appreciation of that final product. I'm like, it, it's, it's really awesome to see that. So, but, but you seem like you're very passionate about it. So I thought you were going to be a carpenter or something. <laughs> it's, al- it's almost like you're, you're storytelling, right? You're storytelling, yeah. like you're storytelling that journey of like creating this, I don't know, table or something like that, you know? Yeah. I need to improve on that too. My like storytelling on my, my DIY videos. I think that would add add a lot of value. You need drone shots, bro. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I can't see our building. (laughs) (laughs) Brian, do you get a drone yet? Uh, no, eventually, 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 (laughs) you know, I'm going to, I'm going to answer your question, Brian. Um, I'm going to take what Paul said and say that I would love to do adult content creation. No. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Um, you know, I, it's really crazy. As I'm thinking about like that question, I'm just like thinking like, dude, I'm, I'm fucking doing it right now. And yeah. Yeah. You are. I was like, I yeah. like, I, I could honestly say in pharmacy, I would have just said, yeah, I want to be a digital marketer and stuff, but it's so much more than that. It's just like, I don't even know what the hell I do. You know, part of it is like, I feel like I'm like a part coach, part like content creator, part like businessman, part like so many different parts. I don't really know where to put, like classify what I exactly do, you know? Hmm. But all I know is that every single day I wake up so fucking satisfied and it's like, yeah, money's, I guess like you're asking like if money was an issue, but fuck it. Why not have both, bro? But, I, but you truly are living in that thing where, you know, yeah. you were had, you were technically unemployed and money is like starting whatever to you can fucking, do whatever you want and you yeah. picked it, you picked yeah. your passion. I think that's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's like crazy. Like, dude, how cool is it to know that, yo, I'm reading these books. Like I can read these books whenever I want. And I just need to think of a way to make my ROI on it and add value to people like change people's lives man be able to like you know be able to help my friends and help strangers around the world take action on something that they want to do but they are too scared to that's that's the best feeling of the world it is hard to break into the adult industry 
for sure. Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, you know a little bit about that? Maybe we should no, do G four P. I'll tell you quickly mine, and I always cheat yeah. with my answer. I have three. <laughs> I want to do Wong Fu, bro. <laughs> oh, that that that's a newfound one. Um, I wonder if it. I can't remember if it's part of it. Yeah, it's kind of part of it. So there's three, and I was thinking very traditional roles. This is before I realized the whole world of entrepreneurship. But uh, dancer, I love dancing. Mm-hmm. Motivational speaker, because like just to like inspire so many individuals uh, is, is amazing. And then the third is uh, stand-up comedian. <laughs> that those are the the three things i would love to do hey brian i would love to see your uh your ted talk on adult dancing adult dancing <laughs> you said what? you were interested in dancing and motivational speaking man Wait, how's that factor to adult dancing <laughs> yeah. all right we're getting we're getting like x-rated here <laughs> You're going to get fired. Oh, um, <laughs> no, but you know, what's really interesting, like, let me bring it back a little bit, but like, I think life after pharmacy school, I think what we're all doing, like kind of our, in our own way, I think one thing that we're doing like with YouTube is actually really investing in a high income skill and we're all going our, we're very similar in a way that we all create videos, but we all do very, we're all investing into other high income skills that are different as well. Yeah. Well, like, you know, I was thinking about that. Um, when I started YouTube in college, it was like undergrad in 2005, I believe. Mm. And, but all those videos were not pharmacy related. They're just stupid stuff. <laughs> and then uh, basically... You're saying like people thought you were crazy? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So when I was doing YouTube initially, people thought I was pretty crazy or weird or whatever. And they just made fun of me for doing it. And same thing when in, in pharmacy school, actually, you know, people just thought I was weird. <laughs> really? But yeah, even when I started pharmacy school, it was just like people just thought I was kind of weird. But, you know, now looking back, you know, like Kevin said, you know, it's like a high income skill. And over time, I've gotten a lot better, you know, <laughs> doing all this stuff. I've learned a lot, too, with marketing, camera work, everything. Uh-huh. Yeah. Could you tell us one of your early videos, what the content was? Ah, uh, let me see. So like you, you know, I was doing like one of the things was lip sync. Uh, <laughs> 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 or, uh, let's see, what else was there? Wait, can, you, can you tell us the song you lip synced? <laughs> uh, it, it was a made up one. Huh? But it was a parody of um, Justin Timberlake's uh, "Sexy Back," but, <laughs> but instead of sexy, oh. instead of "Sexy Back," it was "Healthy Back." <laughs> <laughs> We're bringing healthy back. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> we were doing uh, that channel was more like health geared because I was trying to build something for my admission to pharmacy school. Huh. Yeah, I was trying to, I was basically in my interview, I was telling them, you know, I started this social media, like health information, trying to target the younger demographic in living a healthier lifestyle. Mm. And and they were like, kind of like really intrigued because it was so new at the time and no one really did that kind of stuff. Yeah. So and maybe that set me apart on my interview. I'm not gonna lie, Paul. You don't seem like the type that would lip sync to me. <laughs> like, I, I, you'd be the last person like to do it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> do you still have the video? It's private now. <laughs> Yo, make it public, man. Yo, if uh, this video gets <laughs> no, yeah. uh, dude, that's awesome. Actually, it wasn't even lip sync. I was actually singing it. <laughs> because it was the parody. Yeah. Yeah. It's that kind of stuff. It's interesting. That's good. That's good. That I learned a lot about you, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but you said lip sync. Actually, you know what's pretty funny? Brian's lip syncing video. I was checking out your content recently because I was trying to prepare for this. But your your lip syncing video is doing like did like I think 40k or something uh you can Brian? See it? yeah i checked it out the other day oh i like, need to go oh my, watch it 
on my channel. You can. See oh shit! I better download it before he uh, hides it. But yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's public, but it's supposed to be blocked in all the countries. Oh really? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. I just uh, went by most viewed, and that's your most viewed video. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was like so. This is 2005. It used to be so insane. 2005. <laughs> That video in one week hit 35,000 views. Yeah. Wow. It was really crazy. But yeah, that was, that was huge back then. But yeah. we, just got, we just got trolled in all the comments. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let, on let, the, the trending page then, huh? Yeah, there was nothing back then. That was, <laughs> that was back when like, you can watch all the videos on YouTube, though. I see. I see. That was crazy. So yeah, let me transition this. I mean, let me ask you guys. I mean, we all have YouTube channels now, but I mean, uh, and Brian, I know you talked a, bit, a little bit about why you started a YouTube channel, but Paul, like, dude, I would love to know what made you start your YouTube channel. So the reason why I started the channel was because I knew I saw like a problem when I was applying for pharmacy school mm. and I was trying to create value for people because I, uh, you know, when I first started the, you know, the health information videos, it was, it wasn't really catching on too much, mm. probably because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Mm. <laughs> and I was learning from that. And so if I, I knew that if I had this same problem, that means probably a lot of other people are struggling to find the same information I was. And so and I just made those videos to help other people out so they could find out how to get into pharmacy school easier. Cause there's just a lot of things that the counselor didn't even know, you know, the, the pre-pharmacy counselors. So yeah, that's basically why I started the channel. So of helping people. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. How about you, Brian? Mm -hmm. Why I started YouTube? Yeah. Well, I started YouTube initially. I have no idea why I started or the, my first thing, but we just created the, the account just to record that Backstreet Boy video. <laughs> 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 and then I got, I, so I was not definitely like altruistic, like Paul, I wasn't trying to help people. <laughs> <laughs> you tried to get famous. Famous, uh, son. Yeah, I have no idea. But we didn't even think we'd be famous. We just we were just like being stupid. We were like freshmen in college. And we we filmed the video of us lip singing, and then throughout the years, it just became kind of like a personal journal where we documented like family events, like friends during college. So a lot of my original videos was us playing pool because that's all we did back in undergrad. Mm. And then you have some dance videos too on there. Oh yeah, yeah. So I like dancing. So I. I recorded myself dancing a lot. <laughs> yeah. So not, none of this is like altruistic. It was definitely not about helping people. It was just about <laughs> <laughs> kind of documenting though your life, right? Yeah, that was kind of it. Yeah. And then when did you start really taking it more seriously and knowing that you wanted to do something like that? Like YouTube? Um, after talking to you, man, because we were, we were both talking about Paul at that time. We're like, yo, Paul, Paul disappeared off the pharmacy content. We got to, <laughs> we're the next generation. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, yeah, because you disappeared for, for a while, Paul. And I was just years, like, right? yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. I was uh, just focused on working and, you know, like my, yeah, I got married and all that stuff, family stuff, but now I'm refocused back. So trying to restart it up. What, what made you want to get back into YouTube, man? Cause you took a, how, how many years did you take off? Oh, psh probably three or four years from the pharmacy channel. Um, and then two, two, no, wait. Yeah. I would say only a year and a half ago, I started that DIY one. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just think I, I, my life stabilized a little bit and then I restarted. <laughs> yeah. So. That's awesome. Yeah. It's dude, Paul, I wish I was like you, man. Like I wish I started, back in the early days, like, cause I'm actually quite late to YouTube. I only started creating content, like consistent content around 2014. Mm. So that was pretty late. Um, sure. I have like some personal videos and stuff on there, but um, man, I really didn't start. And I think one of the major reasons why I started was because even though we're very alike, we have very different personalities and I kind of want to show yeah. my take on something. And at the time, like all my friends were shooting YouTube videos. I was like, dude, uh, let's, let's shoot something, but I don't know what to talk about. And just pharmacy just popped up in my mind. So I just started talking about pharmacy stuff. 
Yeah, that makes sense. That's our niche. <laughs> That's our niche, man. Yeah. Oh, what do you guys see the... Oh, sorry. What are you saying, Brian? I was just curious. Did, you, did a lot of it get influenced from like you living with Joe and stuff? Oh, for me? Yeah. yeah. Dude, when you see people like freaking vlogging all the time in your household, it influences you. That's why like, you know, um, the people around you like really affect the person that you become. So yeah, it was really cool. And I wanted in on that. And I was like, if they can do it, why can't I, you know? So do you guys get, uh, what is it? Feel weird in public trying to vlog? I still feel weird. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, not Kevin does it. Sometimes. (laughs) Sometimes. <laughs> it depends, you know? Like, I try not to be, like, Logan Paul obnoxious and stuff, but uh, I don't really have too much fear of, like, vlogging in public. But sometimes I get it, especially around bigger creators. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Yeah. I'm surprised, because, like, you see some of Kevin's vlogs, and he's, like, in the middle of a coffee shop. There's, like, so many people. He's, like, what's up, guys? <laughs> yeah, like, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's awkward to me. I, I can't vlog in public. Really? I rarely vlog in public. How we how are we gonna vlog at the pharmacy convention, man? Well, I usually go off like to the side. It's and it's usually not me talking. I just like capture someone else talking. So yeah. um I don't know. Vlogging's weird, man. <laughs> just like posting. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's kind of weird too because like some people don't want to be in your vlog, some people do and stuff like that. And it's just like it just it just like I don't know, like when you're, when you're creating content and you have to w- constantly worry about that, that sometimes gets in the way, you know? So I think that's one of the major reasons why I, s- I kind of stepped away from vlogging uh, so much, you know? Because there's people like, I don't want to be in your vlog. I'm just like, oh, goddamn. So I have to scrap that footage and all that sort of stuff. I respect people's privacy, but I just rather not deal, deal with that whole thing. So I just stopped vlogging. Oh, is that your friends or just people in public, like random people? Um, sometimes it's friends. Uh, like I always ask people before, before I start vlog, Hey, do you guys want to be in my, do you guys mind being in my vlog? They either say yes or no, but sometimes even people in public too, like, even though it's perfectly legal in the state, which I'm in because it's public, public area. Uh, still, I just don't want to deal with the whole hassle and stuff like that. Hey, Paul, let me ask you, how did you feel seeing that reaction video with me and Brian? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was weird man I, I, was thought weird. It was pretty, I thought it was pretty cool though I, I was like oh never thought I'd have a reaction video <laughs> and then a couple of my coworkers actually it came up on their recommended list and was like I saw a reaction video about you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like are they from California because my friends talk just like them <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, yeah, I think one of them is. <laughs> so. Oh my God. That's so funny, man. You know, you know, Brian was actually thinking about doing a reaction to your reaction. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do it. It's just, <laughs> I haven't had time. I'm trying to think about how to, how to make the video. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I just thought, I just thought that was really funny. I, I was always just like curious about your reaction about that. <laughs> No, I liked it. I thought it was funny. You know, I didn't take nothing personal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, you know, that's why we uploaded it, right? Brian wants to start beef with you and stuff. <laughs> Kevin Charles start instigating. <laughs> hey, maybe you should have been talking crap and uh, about, uh, about Paul, man. Okay. Okay. And then on Facebook, you guys are started trying to start a war too. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. It was Brian. I just, I just, I just tagged Brian. Okay, I was just trying to show you the truth. <laughs> you, what we need to do is get Mimi into action. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Dude, I don't know Mimi at all. So you don't? Is she is she your guys' friends or what? How did she, how do you guys know her? Uh, it's funny because I actually helped spawn her YouTube channel because she used to watch my YouTube channel and we just connected. Right. And so we started talking and just like Brian, I was just like, Hey, uh, she always thought about YouTube. She wanted to do YouTube. I was just like, well, dude, just shoot it. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And she ended up creating a lot of videos. It's crazy. I think her channel is bigger than mine. Really? <laughs> I don't think, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, no, I, I think so. <laughs> I think so. Hold on. Let me see. 
from your guys' standpoint, do you think it's easier for like Asian females to do YouTube than Asian males? Huh. Whatever, whatever Brian answered. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think like um, it's the thing with social media. Like everybody likes looking at girls, right? Females like looking at girls. Males like looking at girls. Um, just social media wise, I think it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot easier for them, you know, um, in certain ways, right? Yeah. But yeah. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, I, I think for sure. I, I'm kind of curious too from from both of your channels. Is like, I've always wondered why my demographics for my YouTube channel is actually like 60% guys. Mm. And I'm curious if that's why, like, maybe I'm not as popular as girl YouTubers mm. uh, from that perspective of like, it's especially in pharmacy, like, because pharmacy is more heavily dominated by females. Yeah. They want to watch a female instead. Maybe I just need to wear a wig or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, Brian, I know that clickbait isn't working for you, man. No, no, no. I have no clickbait. I need to get some clickbait from when I go to LA. <laughs> clickbait. I'm going to look at my demographics right now. My DIY demographics is a uh, 60 or 65 percent male and 35 huh. percent female. Yeah, I'm 60 percent male, 40 percent female. That's interesting. Yeah, uh, that really changed. Like that started changing after the whole, um, like why I'm like 30 and single with Angela because the demographics for that, the, all the guys that shit on Angela for that video they are it's like 80 percent, 80 percent guys on that video so i think wow. i probably have more i have a little more female viewers than i think i am it's just that one outlier that's screwing everything up all my metrics okay so my pharmacy channel i got 47 percent female 53 percent male wow. for Ooh. for uh this year i just looked at this year's dem uh, demographics sweet that's very interesting. Like, I'm very curious as to like why certain people are drawn to certain content. If you think about it, like all of us have pharmacy content, but what draws a certain. Yeah. Uh, why, did, why do I have pretty 50, 50 split? You know, I don't know. Well, I think it's, I think it's um, our personalities too, right? People will gravitate toward people like people like them. So for Asian males, they're going to probably gra gravitate toward us more rather yeah. than asian yeah. females probably toward mimi mimi is probably like really heavily dominate like her her hers is like mostly female her demographic yeah and her her channel i think is like 50 subscribers away from mine like she's gonna she's gonna uh surpass me very quick and she doesn't even post son she doesn't <laughs> post. <laughs> why are you making me feel bad man Hey, yeah, it's not about the numbers. That's all we're learning about, right? It's not, no, about, it's not the about the numbers. It's really <laughs> no. like at the end of the day, it's never about the numbers because yeah. like you just need your thousand. It really now. is, but it <laughs> yeah, that's your ego talking, man. That's your ego. <laughs> just like how you're trying to call out Paul, man. <laughs> start, start YouTube drama. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, man, wait. Dude, we, I can't believe we've been like on the on Zoom for about an hour thirty, man. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, I would recommend you guys following uh, Paul. Paul, um, fuck, I just blanked out on your name, Brian. Paul, Brian, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so guys, make sure. <laughs> I know this is so embarrassing. Uh, so guys, make sure that you follow Paul, Brian, and me. Um, subscribe, and uh. Let us know if we do do another collaboration. Um, what kind of things are you curious about? Let me know in the comments and we'll see you guys later. Peace.